everybody scott golden here with the um pro wrestling logic youtube channel and and again uh here at pro wrestling logic we got nearly actually over 2000 audios for your listening pleasure uh we got um old school new school all points in between um and so the recap roman reigns defeating brock lesnar at the crown jewel uh, event uh, Roman Reigns segment. They do an opening segment where Lesnar and Reigns uh, go at each other. It takes up almost the first half hour of the program. Uh, Reigns and Heyman head out. Michael Cole and Pat McCaffrey discuss Lesnar's tweet, uh, promising to show up tonight and beat Reigns senseless. Reigns puts his hand out as Heyman handed him the microphone. Fans are booing and wonder. He wonder if Heyman Heyman is holding the title for him and ultimately that leads to uh some sort of uh and so it's i mean it's it's a very um challenging thing in that you know i mean they're they're obviously going forward with more of the roman reigns and and uh um what the 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 basic angle but it's it's certainly weaker than you'd like anyway universal champion roman reigns makes his way in puts his hand out Asking Heyman to hand him the mic. Heyman does. They wonder if Heyman's holding the title for him or Lesnar. He notes Heyman handed him the mic when he put out his hand. However, he didn't hand him the belt yesterday when he put out his hand at Crown Jewel. So, obviously, trying to tease some dissension there. Reigns told him Heyman he's not good at his job. He then bragged about being good at his job and called himself the greatest universal champion of all time. Reigns then listed everyone he's beat this year, including Edge, Daniel Bryan, John Cena, and Brock Lesnar. Reigns then demanded Heyman read Lesnar's tweet. He knocked the phone out of Heyman's hand and makes fun of Lesnar. Reigns calls out Lesnar and waits for him to come out to the ring. Lesnar didn't come out and Reigns claimed Lesnar was scared. Reigns isn't going anywhere and demanded that Lesnar come to the ring and then they go uh, they go out to a commercial. Back from the break, Reigns was still talking about talking in the ring. He notes that Lesnar is no show and wondered why Lesnar sent out the tweet. Fans then break into a loud We Want Lesnar chant and Reigns had waited long enough to ensure that Lesnar's coming so he decided to leave and before Lesnar could or Reigns could leave Lesnar's music hit and obviously there's a big reaction from the crowd. Lesnar jumped in the ring and attacked Reigns. He sends Reigns to the floor and then briefly brawled and they... Uh, tossed him onto the steps. Lesnar and Heyman had a brief stare down. Lesnar nails Reigns with the steps and clear and clears the announce table. Lesnar sets up for the F5 through the table, but the Usos uh, and referees ran in. Uh, Lesnar beats up the Usos, but Reigns recovers. Uh, Lesnar pushes Reigns into the ring post to regain control. He then grabs the camera from the cameraman and then throws it at Reigns. Reigns avoids it and Lesnar snaps. Uh, he then attacked the referee and the officials and Adam Pierce sends down a bunch of wrestlers to stop him. Reigns then took the opportunity to turn to run to the back. Lesnar beats down Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo. However, Cesaro, Boogs, and Ivar convince Lesnar to stop. Lesnar jumps in the ring and posed with the Universal title and ends the segment. Back from the break, Adam Pierce is in the ring. He is angry with Lesnar and for attacking the referees and causing Good deal of property damage. Pierce then indefinitely suspends Lesnar for uh, endangering the superstars and officials. Lesnar walks to the back, and fans break into a loud suplex city chant. Lesnar grabs Pierce by the neck and chokes him. Pierce repeated that Lesnar suspended. Lesnar then grabbed Pierce. 
gives him an F5, and then picks up Pierce again and gives him a second one. Uh, this definitely puts Lesnar over as a big star. Back from the break, they recap Lesnar after attacking Pierce. Caleb Braxton tries to interview uh, Sonya Deville, but she's on the phone. Naomi shows up and demands a rematch. Uh, Deville turns her down. This angle's going nowhere. Roster members are standing in the background talking. Drew McIntyre shows up, as promised, to issue an open challenge. Uh, Drew defeats Sami Zayn 648. This isn't bad. Uh, he demands someone come out. Zayn tries to stall, but McIntyre goes after him and then tosses him into a barricade. They immediately go to break, but uh, back from the break, Zayn is firmly in control, but McIntyre fights back. He backs Zayn into the corner and threw him across the ring with a belly to belly suplex. McIntyre follows up with a neckbreaker and tries to go for the claymore, but Zane rolls out of the ring and uh, hangs uh, McIntyre on the top rope, taking over. Zane then hits the Blue Thunder Bomb, but McIntyre countered with a Glasgow kiss. McIntyre missed a splash and hits the ring post for his trouble. Zane then sets him up uh, against the ring post, sets up for the Huluva kick, and... McIntyre countdown is done. Uh, Zane then goes on to kick, but McIntyre counters with a claymore and gets the win. Um, coronation of King Xavier. Not a bad little segment for what it is. Woods and Kingston are good in their roles. However, uh, the first hour of the program only had one match and seven minutes of wrestling. Kingston makes his way to the ring as they go to a commercial break. Back from the break, they show highlights from Crown Jewel. Kingston gave Woods a amazing introduction, and he gets a big reaction. And then there's a throne, a cloak, and a crown uh, set up in the ring. Kingston then treats Woods like real royalty and gives him... Uh, his best cloak, scepter, and crown. Fans erupt uh, with a You Deserve It champ. Kingston proclaims Woods as the king that and places the crown on his head. Crowd's happy with this. Woods thanks the fans, promised that his reign would be fun but fair. Woods then demanded to hear King's gospel, and Kingston read a proclamation. Woods and Kingston celebrate ending the segment. In the back, um, SmackDown Women's Champion Becky Lynch discusses the championship exchange with Charlotte Flair uh, later. Lynch never gave up the title before and noted that she had to leave as Becky. T she'd leave as Becky two belts tonight, although she did give it up before to go have a baby. We seem to forget. Mansoor defe uh, defe defeated... Uh, uh, Mustafa Ali, Ali and Mansoor had a okay match. 226, why even, or 236, why even have them get dressed for this? Uh, fans didn't really seem to care. Ali immediately goes to dropkick, but Mansoor avoids it. Mansoor then takes over and backdropped Ali uh, out of the ring. He then follows up with a flying crossbody for near fall. And Ali fights back and pulls Mansoor into the middle rope. Ali then hits a sit-out powerbomb for a near fall. Mansoor regains control with a German suplex and clothesline. Ali then fights back with an attempted sunset flip off the second turnbuckle. Mansoor then reversed and pinned Ali for the win. They air a series of short promos for Ridge Holland, Ali... Alberto Carrillo and Angel Garza and Sheamus discussing joining the SmackDown brand. Hit Row uh, debuts on SmackDown. Hit Row, uh, I, which is Isaiah Sir Scott, Ashante, Ashante the Adonis, Top Dollar, and B-Fab make their debut and introduce themselves as they made their entrance. Hit Row with Ashante the Adonis and B-Fab defeated uh, local talents. One minute, 17 seconds. I mean, this was good enough. Total squash, Scott and 
Top dollar dominated early and picked up the win. Top dollar picked up both enhancement talents and slams them down. Finish comes. Hit row hits a side slam kick combo for the win. Recapping Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. A suspension angle from earlier in the night. Caleb Braxton's in the back interviewing Sonya Deville. She notes that Adam Pearce isn't doing good after Brock Lesnar attacked him earlier. And DeVille notes that Becky Lynch and uh, Charlotte Flair exchange belts later, which could get out of control. Non-title match, Happy Corbin with uh, Madcap Moss defeats the Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura, 9-18. Not exactly the best of matches, and I'm sorry, Corbin still doesn't belong on a national program. Uh, Madcap Moss tell, tells bad jokes, and Corbin... Can't stop laughing. Uh, can't be comedy. Doesn't get over. But anyway, it is what it is. Nakamura has an early advantage and hits a sliding knee. Corbin tries to fight back, but Nakamura backs him off into the corner. Corbin gains control after dropping Nakamura off of the apron to the floor. Back from the brick. Corbin is firmly in control with a chin lock. Nakamura then fights back, but Corbin... Hits the around the ring post clothesline for a near fall. Nakamura avoids a right hand and hits Corbin with a flying drop kick. Nakamura then runs wild and hits a knee in the corner for a two count. Corbin then avoids uh, Kingston and slams Nakamura face to face for near fall. Books then plays the guitar and Nakamura. Fires up again. Nakamura goes for Kinshasa, but uh, Moss grabs Boog's guitar and causes a distraction in the process. Nakamura then goes after Moss, but Corbin takes advantage and hits the end of days for the title win. Uh, in the back, Charlotte Flair discusses the upcoming title exchange, and uh, obviously Becky Lynch is involved in that. Uh, they do the title exchange to close the show. Uh, obviously a strange segment. They traded titles, but teased having acted like they want to go at it with each other, and they both want to leave with both belts. Uh, they sh they switch the belts, and Sasha Banks and Flair become the main feud on SmackDown, it appears. SmackDown Women's Champ Becky Lynch makes her entrance before the break. Sonya Deville is already in the ring, back from the break, and Ra Raw Women's Champ Charlotte makes her way out. Michael Cole and Pat McCaffrey push the idea that Flair and Lynch might not exchange the belts. DeVille recaps that Lynch and Flair were drafted from Raw and SmackDown, respectively. Uh, DeVille demands that they trade belts and the fans break into a loud Becky Two Belts chant. Anyway, Lynch didn't want to give up her belt, but tries to grab the Raw title from Flair. Flair drops the title on the mat instead of giving it to Lynch. DeVille demands that Flair pick up the belt and hand it to Lynch. Lynch then threw the SmackDown title at Flair and takes the Raw title. Flair mocks Lynch and challenged her to a winner-takes-all match right now. Uh, the fans pop for this. Sasha Banks' music hits, and she makes her way to the ring. Banks nods, and she runs... The SmackDown brand and gets in Flair's face. Lynch said that she, she's off of Raw and promised to see them at Survivor Series. Lynch walks off and the fans break into a Becky chant. Banks and Flair briefly argue before they break into a brawl. And they have a stare down to close the show. Uh, they're trying, but WWE is still flat as can be. Anyway, we'll be back with more right after this.